Hey YouTube subscribers, I know I haven't done one of these videos in a while, and I'm sorry about that, but there have been about a million different reasons I haven't been able to do a YouTube video recently. Uh, some of it has to do with my PlayStation 3's hard drive, some of it has to do with school. Um, I'll explain more about it in an update, but I don't want to take up too much of this video to explain everything. So without any further ado, let's get back into the Fox News commentary. And we know from the Federal Trade Commission that uh, the games are routinely sold about half the time to kids underage. My son did two stings uh, a month ago on Target and Best Buy and was able to walk in. He did Jack, it uh, with me Jack, uh, uh, yes, and buy two mature games. For anybody who lives in the United States, it's probably not too much of a surprise that a lot of video games are sold to minors. Especially if you are a minor, you know, most people I know who are minors own at least like 5, 10 M-rated games. Plenty of teen rated games. So Jack Thompson is right, probably, in saying that a ton of games are sold to minors. However, that doesn't really mean much, because I've taken apart every argument that he's thrown at me, where he says that video games should be banned from being sold to minors. So until he actually makes a good argument about why they shouldn't be sold to minors, that's kind of a pointless thing to bring up. And currently the Supreme Court, or soon anyway, the Supreme Court will begin to debate a video game law that would ban video games. And this is, some, this is something that people really need to keep an eye on. I'll make another video when the Supreme Court makes its decision on that law. Children are a protected this. class in this country. You can't sell pornography the, to children. The game is not sold to children, to Jack. This. Now here, Jack Thompson is pretty much misrepresenting the way the ESRB works and the way banning games works in the United States. The game, that, the game that they're talking about is Manhunt, which is rated M. Now, he says that porn can't be sold to children, which is true, but neither can pornographic games. Any game that's really porn would be rated adults only, which is only sold to people who are 18 or older. Also, most major console companies like Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo don't even allow adults only rated games to be on their systems. So really, what he's talking about just doesn't happen. The industry, the industry cannot, the Federal Trade Commission has shown, enforce its own Can't. age rating policy. Well, so what about the parents, Jack? What about the parents? A, where what are about the them parents? enforcing the kind of house that's, that they want to have? The Jack Thompson made two pretty interesting mistakes here, especially because he's supposed to be an attorney. First of all, he seems to think that the ESRB is somehow responsible for making sure that no minors ever buy a game that they rate M, or adults only. That is not their job at all. The law enforcement is supposed to enforce the law. Or, in the case of selling the games, the stores enforce the law. Now also, there isn't even a law that prohibits minors from buying M-rated games. There is one against adult-only games, but that is upheld very well. Now of course, the man debating, debating Jack Thompson makes a very good point. Obviously, the parents also have to enforce the law, because the ESRB has no way to enforce the law. So Jack Thompson really doesn't make any sense here. Yeah, Jonathan, that's fine. You can enforce it in your house, Jonathan, that's but exactly, you know, kids go to other kids' homes, and they're going to see this game no, no. if it's out there. You Terry, can't keep your kids from that. going to their friends' it's, houses. Yeah. I already addressed in parts one and two of my commentary why there isn't really enough evidence to to think that video games cause violence or any other problem in kids. So no one should be too worried about their kid going over to their friend's house and playing games. The big thing here that is really outrageous is that the Fox News anchor completely took a side in the debate, which is not supposed to happen. The anchor is supposed to be there kind of as a moderator, but she's not supposed to take a side in the, in the debate. That's not how debates work. It's between two people. It's not fair when it's two on one. So now the poor guy defending video games has no chance. Terry, it's not well, just yeah. that. A kid can walk into Walmart with no parent in sight and the court will sell it to him. So that's not parental control. Well, it's the, it, who's, whose house is the kid bringing it back to, Jack? I mean, it's not, the gamer, it's not the game programmer's fault. And a lot of people play violent video games, a lot of people watch pornography. It doesn't mean they go out and kill people. And if I'm playing a video game, I don't care how violent or, or, or distasteful you might think it is, I'm not violating anyone else's rights. And that's well, the you know, responsibility that sounds, of the government. Jonathan, that sounds good, except the American Psychological Association found in its official findings in 2005 that violent video games, in fact, make adolescents and teens more aggressive. Mm. 
So you can say that, but the science is all on our side of the issue. All right, we're going to give you the last word there, Jack. Thank you. And that is the end of the clip. Now, to go over thing again really quickly, first Jack Thompson started off by saying the same thing he said twice already. And that is that kids can go into a store, in this case Walmart, and buy a video game. Uh, you know, the guy defending video games made a really good comeback to that. He said, well, so what? The parents are supposed to be the ones who take care of their home. And of course, he's right. Jack Thompson didn't really have a comeback to that, so instead he changed the topic. Uh, he said something about the American Psychiatric Association, but that's really not a good point either. Because for every bit of research that shows that video games cause violence, there's literally about an equal number that show that video games have no effect whatsoever on violence. So it's all very contradictory, you really can't draw any conclusions from that. And then finally, of course, Fox News gives Jack Thompson the final say. That's all very interesting, because I did not edit out any important part of this interview whatsoever. So Jack Thompson literally got about 75 to 80% of the talking time, and the final word. So Fox News gave Jack Thompson a really big advantage in this debate. Really, that's about all I've got to say. Ah, well, enough of that. So, what do we have next? Well, we're not done. Oh, no. Well, that would be Glenn Beck. If you do not know who Glenn Beck is, you're very lucky. So, who exactly is he? Crazy conservative on TV screaming about the dangers of video games. Pretty much. There, if you're a parent, there are some other things that you should know that should send shivers down your spine if you hear these three words. Grand Theft Auto. We are training our kids to be killers. Yeah, if you didn't already know this, Glenn Beck is known pretty well for his use of fear tactics. I'm gonna jump around in this clip fairly often because it's a really long clip and I do not want this video to become too long. And here's how I got there. If you think that video games are just harmless fun, which everybody always says, you should know that our military, our leaders at the Pentagon, have never seen it that way. It started back in World War I. Young soldiers, we sent Americans out to the front lines over in Europe, and they wouldn't pull the trigger. Even there on the front lines with people charging them, they would not pull the trigger. It seems hard to believe in today's world, but killing each other is actually not a natural human instinct. Senior officers found if they trained the soldiers by putting a human silhouette on the bullseye during target practice, they could actually condition men to shoot more easily. The technology progressed. So did the training techniques. Paper targets evolved into electronic uh, simulations. And welcome to the great-great-grandfather of the video game developed by the Pentagon. Now that's quite a leap in logic. First, he pointed out that back in World War I, American soldiers would not pull the trigger. Or at least, a, a large number wouldn't. And then, the Pentagon started training them better, and then they could. What does that have to do with video games? I mean, he never really makes the connection. He just calls those targets that look like people to be the ancestors of video games. Which they really aren't. The method proved so successful that the military's firing rate First time you had to shoot a human being went from 15% in World War II to 55% in the Korean War to over 90% in Vietnam, and now that number is almost 100. Now, Glenn Beck isn't really known for his intelligence, but at the same time, there are such large gaping holes in this argument that it is incredible. First of all, video games did not exist in any of the time periods that he mentioned except now. So obviously, the increase from 15 to 90% happened completely before video games existed. Clearly, it was because they learned how to train the troops better. It had nothing to do with video games. They didn't even exist. I want to make one thing clear before we go any further. I am not blaming all of society's problems on video games. That would be stupid. Oh, thank God. I mean, for a second there, I thought that he was seriously blaming everything on video games. At least we know he's not quite that stupid, right? It is the entire pop culture. It's mu music, it's movies, it's radio, it's television, it's all of it. <laughs> okay, I, I really should have seen that coming. I gave Glenn to way too much credit. I mean, do I even have to explain how that doesn't make sense? I really don't think I do. 
According to the Journal of American Medical Association, just television, the introduction of television in the 1950s caused a doubling of the homicide rate in America. Now that's funny for a couple reasons, but the one that I really want to address is, is that normally the 1950s are remembered in the United States is kind of a perfect time. Maybe not so in Europe, but in the United States, like, we kind of idolized the 1950s. Uh, like, if you've ever played Fallout 3, I mean, that, uh, that game is very interesting to Americans because it kind of combines, like, like our worst night nightmares and our best dopes all into one. But the 50s are remembered as a really good time in the United States, so it's kind of weird that he brings it up. It's a really bad piece of evidence. Nico. He is a low-level uh, low Eastern European thug. He tries to um, uh, rise up through the ranks through unbelievable acts of violence. That is about the most shallow way you could possibly look at the story of Nico. He is a man who comes to the United States and, tr and at first, at least, tries to avoid getting involved in crime. He said that he wouldn't kill anyone else. And eventually the whole story gets really complicated, but it, it's really about whether the American dream can still be achieved today. And if you've played the game, you know it's a whole lot deeper than most people think. It's very similar to Scarface in that way. Parents, listen up, because here's what you need to know tonight. Yeah, uh, thanks for the additional scare tactics there, Glenn. But hey, I mean, on the bright side, at least it's only Glenn Beck, right? Gavin McKiernan is the National Grassroots Director for the Parents Television Council, and Jack Thompson is a Miami attorney who knows just how influential Grand Theft Auto can actually be. Oh, Jesus. Jack Thompson, Glenn Beck, together. I mean, I swear, I, I think this might actually cause the world to collapse into a black hole of stupidity from which no logical or intelligent argument could possibly escape. Jack, I, I, I yeah. see that this is M for mature, which is not the worst rating. No. Um, this is a, uh, Glenn, this is a, uh, in fact, a subterfuge by the Entertainment Software Rating Board. This game should be rated adults only. While I do feel like this is a more legitimate opinion, I'll point out that most adults only rated games have full nudity, which Grand Theft Auto 4 does not. The ESRB comes up with a phony rating uh, and puts a mature on it, and therefore it is being sold to teens. This is a criminal act in violation of 47 states and the federal jurisdiction's laws regarding sexual material harmful to minors. Now Jack Thompson brings up something that he brought up before, uh, where he says that the ESRB is faking ratings. I believe I already addressed that in part two of this commentary. Um, also, Grand Theft Auto 4 is not in violation of all those laws because... Again, it does not have full nudity. You could spend 70 or 80 hours on Grand Theft Auto uh, just to, uh, to finish the game, and that's if you're good at it. All right, that was the other guy who was on the show. I don't want to focus on him, but obviously he has never played the game. He's also attacked it a ton. If it takes you 70 hours to beat Grand Theft Auto, you clearly were not trying. Most people beat it in under 30. Whatever happened to Pong? I just wanted to include this one last clip because it shows that Glenn has not played any games in about the last 30 years. Before I end this video, I feel like there's one thing that I need to make clear. I do not want this video to be an attack on conservatives, the Republican Party, or any type of conservative organization. Uh, for my international viewers, the Republican Party in the United States is generally conservative. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because Fox News generally is considered to have a conservative bias. Uh, Jack Thompson is a conservative Republican attorney, or former attorney. And Glenn Beck is a right-wing conservative. The point of this video is not to attack conservative positions. It's to attack, well, really to defend video games against anyone who says stupid things trying to get them banned. I was going to include a segment on Hillary Clinton, who's a liberal Democrat, but unfortunately I do not have time. So instead, I will let the theme to Grand Theft Auto San Andreas play me off. I may do the Hillary Clinton segment later.